This video is going to be a film study look at Jameer Gibbs and the impact he had in the Lions' 31-23 win over the Bucks. I think it was significant. If you look at it from a trio perspective, Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, and Iman Ross St. Brown accounted for 256 of the Lions' 390 yards of total offense. Now, Gibbs himself at 114 yards from scrimmage in the win, including an extremely dominant ninth possession where it really, I think, puts on full display what he's capable of, maybe not over the course of every possession of the game, but two or three possessions a game, you can rely on Jameer Gibbs to make plays and generate big yardage, double up a first down, meaning a 20-yard gain. He capped this ninth possession with a 31-yard touchdown, but on the drive, which was a 75-yard possession, he accounted for 56 yards. Pretty significant, if you ask me. And that lead, that put the, the Lions up 24-17, that 31-yard touchdown run. That was a lead that the Lions would never relinquish. And a moment where I think you saw the pure speed and talent of Gibbs and what he was capable, what he's capable of on consecutive plays. Two or three plays in a row getting the football, really stressing a defense. Uh, Gibbs didn't get to 1,000 yards rushing in the regular season that I'm aware of. But at this point now, through two playoff games, he has 25 touches for 182 yards. It's clearly been a big factor in the wins over the Rams and the Bucks, even though his run totals against the Rams weren't that significant. He now has two playoff touchdowns. I think that Jameer Gibbs is a real wild card for this 49ers defense. Now, is it possible that they come out there and slow down or absolutely stop the Lions' run game? Sure. I mean, if, if Frank Glasgow is injured or compromised in any way, and Jackson is unable to play, which it looks like he will be able to, then sure, is it possible the 49ers come out and shut them down? But the thing about Gibbs, shut down the run game, the thing about Gibbs that I like is he can hurt you in the pass game as well, number one. Number two, it only takes one play for Gibbs to bust something and totally change the dynamic of, of a possession or a game, in fact. So let's look at some of the film, and we'll get started off early. Actually, the first completion I'm gonna, or the first play I'm going to show you is not involving uh, Jameer Gibbs. This is second possession. It's going to be complete to Jamison Williams. Now, Gibbs is actually not on here, but I want to show you uh, some of the things that you're getting in terms of this game and what the Bucks were doing and how late Jared Goff had to read some of these things when the Bucks were playing uh, man-to-man. So here is a linebacker who does not look like he's in man, but he is. He's got Montgomery to this side. You've got man on here, man on number two. Now, it could be just a match defense there, but once this linebacker clears the window, you can see Golf is looking to that side right now. As soon as that linebacker hedges to the sideline, up the top side of the screen for us, Golf is already pulling the pin on the grain. He knows that Jameson Williams is going to make the end cut. Ends up being an 11-yard gain. Use that to set up this next play after a face mask. It's a 12 personnel grouping, which, of course, will not include Brock Wright at this point anymore because he suffered an injury. Gibbs in the backfield, and it's going to be a five-yard gain. He kind of sn almost snuck through here. Outside zone, and you got a great job here, I believe, by the left guard. Uh, we'll get the end zone angle so you can see it again. Taking over that D tackle. Gibbs trying to push it downfield, ends up getting five yards. Multiple alignments in the backfield, number one. Number two, multiple concepts that he was used on. Some of them counter or the tackle log that I'll show you in a minute. But here's Jackson, really going to miss him. Um, able to overtake this D tackle, even though Jackson ends up on the ground. Gives a seam and occupies that defensive tackle. End up getting a five-yard gain. Gibbs is committed. Like, he hits things hard. He hits things full speed. And uh, I think that's what makes him doubly threatening, is that it only takes one seam for it to be over. So let's move forward a little bit. Third possession. 11 personnel. This is going to be the first time that we saw this play. And Levante David is just a football savant. Now, he's unblocked here, don't get me wrong. But he's the backside linebacker for how this works. You get a counter step by Gibbs, and he's going to bring it back here. Sewell is pulling, and he's going to log, which means he wraps around. This is Levante David. Look, you can actually see him kind of lean in a little bit to see it. And then once he sees Gibbs redirect, he is gone. He's a brilliant football player. He is the guy that prevents this from being a huge gain and, and maybe even a touchdown. It ends up only going down as a six-yard gain. End zone angle, same play. 
Gibbs with a counter step. Give me my spot shadow was off. Try to do this as live time as quickly as possible so that I can get these videos out faster. You can see Levante David is outflanked by Gibbs by probably two yards, I guess. I mean, he's two yards behind him, and he just hits it 1,000 miles an hour. Gibbs almost is gone. I don't know about you, but I thought he was. Levante David is just a brilliant inside linebacker. First and 10. A couple of plays later, same drive, third possession. So it's late first quarter, and it's six yards uh, for Gibbs. Out of a shotgun alignment. Now it's a Jill Iso, same side run, so he's up to the top side. Uh, the inside tight end is going to step to the outside linebacker D end, and then Laporta is going to Jill Iso insert. And I think this is designed to cut back to that tight end side, to the top side of the screen. I think it's designed for Gibbs to bring this back and for that Jill Iso block by the tight end, which I think is Laporta, to be a seal on um, 52 Britt, who is extremely physical against the run and is there to make the tackle. So here is the two tight end side right and Laporta. Basically a Jill call is tight end on the outside linebacker D end and an insert by the outside tight end. A Jack call would be the other way around. You're going to dig him out and let the the bigger tight end go get the uh, inside linebacker, but this is Jill. Who knows what they call it in the Lions system? But he's bringing this back to Laporta's side. Has to dodge a diving uh, Cansey in the backfield just to get six yards. Tough ass runner, man. Way tougher than people give him credit for. Talking about that he's a speedster. Yeah, he's got great, tremendous speed, but he's way more than that. So this is. Going to be trips once St. Brown motions over. This is third possession. We're now early second quarter. And it's a little screen out to the top side. Jameson Williams misses his block. Additionally, St. Brown isn't able to get as big of a piece of the outside linebacker. Now, this is just another example. This is Levante David. He's literally pointing, calling out the play, and reacts immediately. Runs underneath of St. Brown. Forces Gibbs to cut it back. To the defender that Jamison Williams was unable to block. Let's see it one more time. Look, it still goes down as a five-yard gain, so it's a productive play uh, for Jameer Gibbs. But the Bucks defense contests everything, and Levante David's a big part of uh, damn near everything they do do well, at least. Going to move forward to the eighth possession, which is going to be late third quarter. This is where the Lions take a 17-10 lead, capping the drive with a one-yard touchdown run, run by Craig Reynolds. Now, this is actually not involving Jameer Gibbs. Uh, Montgomery's in the backfield again, but I wanted to illustrate this play. This is the same play that Brock Wright scored on against the Jets last year uh, for the final margin, if memory serves. It's a third and one, eighth possession, play action fake. Look, Wright is being engaged by a linebacker. Laporta is running out into the flats, being guarded by Levante David. I have to think if Levante David was there at inside linebacker, meaning in the in the area that Brock Wright wouldn't have been as wide open. He's absolutely butt naked uh, up to the top side of the screen, into the boundary, very reminiscent of some goal line plays that Ben Johnson has called before. And like I said, that fourth and one call against the Jets last year where Brock Wright took it to the house, I believe, for the game-winning uh, touchdown in New York. Moving forward here, same drive, eighth possession. This is going to be Gibbs to the left side for eight yards. Same formation, bunch formation, same exact play. Sewell is logging it, meaning he's not kicking out the edge defender. He's looping around. This is Shaq Barrett, who has seen everything there is to see in the NFL. So he recognizes it. So he's going to bang uh, Sewell and make contact with him, try to disrupt him. Sewell was so strong and athletic, he's still able to go out there. He just He's impeded such that he's not able to get to the boundary side corner, 35, who's in on the tackle. This is the fourth and one where neither Montgomery nor Gibbs is on the field. Brilliant stuff from Ben Johnson, putting in third string running back who uh, been used more often in pass pro than on run plays, unless, like, for example, the Week 6 game when Jameer Gibbs didn't play and David Montgomery uh, went out with injury. Early in this game, credit to the Bucks, they were doing a great job stopping the run. The Lions' first eight carries generated 22 yards. So 
held true from the week six game, the first two times when these teams played, and that the Bucks were able to stop the run uh, without compromising themselves against the pass too much. In this case, fourth and one, Reynolds downhill fits off of the double team inside of uh, Ragnall trying to deal with uh, Vita Vey at nose tackle. You got a double team here on Cansey, and Vita Vey is right there on the opposite side of Golf and Ragnall, the center. He does kind of shrug Ragnall off, but Reynolds is already downhill such that he's able to get in, make it 17 10. And then this is the Jameer Gibbs possession where he really takes over. Ninth possession tied at 17 because the Bucks have just been able to score. And you've got the same formation where they've run to the weak side twice. It's that tackle log play that I showed and that the announcers illustrated uh, during the game, whereby Sewell would wrap around and Gibbs would give a little counter step and then run back to the outside. Now, in this case, they motion over. So maybe you think, all right, it's coming again. Nope, they brunt, run split zone. And in this case, Gibbs bounces it, ends up getting six yards. Nice job by Josh Reynolds getting out to uh, Levante David as well. David is on everything. Guy has great eyes in terms of where the football goes. In this case, Josh Reynolds is able to get just enough of a piece of him. And then Davis folds inside. Great tackle, if you ask me, because it looked like it was going to be a lot more yards than what it ended up being. Same possession. This is now fourth quarter. We've flipped, and this is going to be underneath to Gibbs for 12. Great job, I thought, by the announcing crew talking about the, the dynamic that Gibbs brings in terms of getting the ball to him in the pass game underneath, even on these somewhat innocuous-seeming routes where there's not, it's not 8, 10 yards down the field when it's being completed, but you look up and it's a 12-yard gain. You look up and it's a 15-yard gain. Now, this one happens to be a little bit shorter. I think it's a 12-yard gain uh, to Gibbs underneath that gives the Lions the first down. Super strong athlete uh, in contact. He just gets up from these situations all the time after being hit by a couple of guys back-to-back. Uh, First and 10 from the Bucks, 39. And this is, I call it down sweep. Different people have different names for it. Laporta, I'll show you the end zone angle here in a moment. Laporta is stepping to the edge defender, I think Tryon briefly. And then he's going to go down and get the front side inside linebacker. You're going to get guard and center pulling and wrapping out to the boundary. And Gibbs from the opposite side. Full flow follows the center after the kickout block by the right guard. Now Ragnall kind of falls. End zone angle will hopefully give you a little bit better appreciation of the burst that uh, Jameer Gibbs has and his ability to get through small areas. In this case, dodging Ragnall, who fell not once but twice. And you've got an eight-yard gain into the boundary that happened lightning quick. That was a first and 10 run. The very next one is the touchdown out of 21 personnel. As you can see, Cabinda is in the backfield. Brock Wright is on at tight end. Originally, off the snap, it's going to be lead zone flow to this side. And then Gibbs going to cut it back. And, and the, it's just a speed that he comes downhill with. Right now, once he makes his cut, he's totally committed. I seem to remember earlier in the year, there was a little bit less authority on some of the immediate cuts like this one that you see here. This is, once he makes his cut, it's immediate downhill, total decision, total commitment, I should say, and allows him to get to full speed now and then break this guy down, and it's over, even though he wanted to land one more stiff arm um, as he crossed the goal line and then talk some stuff to him as well. End zone angle, same play. You'll see the lead nature of it. It's to our right on the screen to the Lions. Offense is left. You also, I think, get a great job by these guys here, dealing with the defensive tackles, comboing. And then you can see the left tackle and the center are both working up. The right guard is unable to take this guy over, so he just runs him down here. And the left to right on our screen, Levante David gets taken over by the center, and it is over. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant play call, I thought. And as I said, 
Jameer Gibbs accounted for, I think, 56 yards on this drive, 44 yards rushing on three carries, and 12-yard reception. Pretty amazing contribution from a rookie running back, from anyone for that matter that's a rookie in a playoff game, to basically take over a possession and, again, puts the Lions up 24-17. One more play to show you to illustrate um, – his versatility and how dangerous he is. This is a first and 10 from the Bucks, 40, about 8, 20 left in the game. And it's a choice route against Britt, the inside linebacker. Absolute mismatch. Uh, we would just call it a zig route because you can zig or you can zag. Either zig inside or zag outside. In this case, he zigs and he beats uh, 58 pretty cleanly. They've got David assigned to the tight end, so they're playing man. And you know it because 24 runs across the, the field with – um. St. Brown Golf knows exactly where he's going with the football. There's not really much in the way of good choices here for this Bucks team to match up man against the Lions. If it's not St. Brown, if it's not Laporta, who had nine catches on 11 targets, I believe, then it's Gibbs, a guy who I think had 42 or 44 yards reception or receiving yesterday and got a clean win like this one for a 20-yard gain. Helped the Lions go down, go up 31-17. I thought it was a pretty unique day for Jameer Gibbs. He had some power runs, catching the football extremely effectively. The 31-yard touchdown run was a great downhill cut and then just sped away from the safety and, oh, by the way, had to add the, the stiff arm at the goal line. Another illustration of how amazing the draft was for Brad Holmes and the Lions front office this past year in that they traded back Bijan Robinson's a heck of a football player. He's got a Hall of Fame talent, and he's going to contribute, especially if they bring in Bill Belichick. I know that they're going to utilize a talent like that effectively, but Jameer Gibbs, to, for them to be able to trade back, generate more draft picks in this draft that end up being starter caliber players, I thought was just an amazing achievement by the front office on draft night, and even here it looks even better. Appreciate you guys' time, man. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study look, at how well Jameer Gibbs played, helping the Lions power to their second playoff win in as many weeks, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help other Lions fans enjoy it as well.